Hi guys, we're so excited um, to have Anthony Scaramucci with us tonight. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, we're gonna get cooking because I know that everybody's got a lot going on and you know this is really great of you to spend a little bit of time, um, a little bit of time with us. Um, give me one second. I've gotta do one technical thing and then we will get moving. So we're gonna start things off a little differently. We usually talk about the presidential election first, um, but I think that the vice presidential election is, is hot on everybody's mind. Um, I've talked to a lot of people about this and some people seem to indicate that they don't think it matters that much. You know, whoever he chooses is fine. I'm not so sure about that, but our markets show we Kamala Harris um, sort of was in the low 60s, I think earlier today, she's in the mid 50s. What are you thinking about that? Is that price too high, too low? What are you thinking about with the vice presidential? So I like Kamala Harris at that level because she's over 50%. She's probably 70%. So if you're a buyer at 56 cents, you're probably getting a discount. Um, I also think that there was significance to what Joe Biden had in his hand yesterday, which was the notes related mm -hmm. to Kamala Harris. Yep. I think that there's three things that are going on in that campaign right now, and they are don't blow it. The live in the bunker strategy is working for the vice president, at least pursuant to the polls. And so she represents the don't blow it strategy. If you go with a Duckworth, if you go with a Bass, if you go with a Rice, there's a lot more hair on each one of those people. And so Kamala Harris has been vetted. She offered herself up as the, for the presidency. And, you know, I think she is enough in the national spotlight that you don't get the Sarah Palin problem with her. So I have her at 70%. So a 56 cent purchase there is worthwhile. That's my opinion. What do you think about- I think she gets it. What do you think about a Susan Rice? Where would you be comfortable? Well, I love Susan Rice. She's attended our SAW conferences. Vice President Biden has been to our SAW conferences. I've had dinner with both of them. I think she's a very talented person, but the Benghazi situation is a ceiling on top of her, affecting her predicted price, but also her son is affecting her predicted price. Her son is a rabid Trump fan and he's a college organizer uh, for President Trump. I don't think that that's something that the vice president's campaign wants to get involved with right now. Is Susan Rice gonna have a role in a Joe Biden administration? Yes, predict it can start uh, uh, putting odds on Secretary of State after the election, but I don't see her as the, as the vice presidential candidate. So she's a short here at 24 cents. And what do you think about Karen Bass? I, you know, she's sort of come to prominence more recently in our market. Well, a lot of people talk about her. A lot of people like her. She's obviously very effective on television. She has the Joe Biden-esque personality where she's universally likable. And so for those reasons, at seven cents, she's super cheap. I mean, if you wanted to buy some, a, a, a package of, you know, Representative Bass, and you wanted to buy Senator Harris at the same time, I think it's one or the other. I think it's less likely that it'll be Representative Bass, though, because she is not as battle tested on the world stage in the international arena. You're looking at somebody that got an 11 day PhD in Washington nonsense, Allison. Okay, I know how rough it is when they start beating the brains out of you. And she's ready for that. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, when do you think this announcement's gonna come? Uh, I think in the next two or three, uh, well, if he's timing it right, he's gonna wanna do it midweek. So it's either midweek of next week or midweek of the week after. He's not gonna do it on a Friday. Yeah. So it's not tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so it's either next Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or the following Tuesday, Wednesday, if I had a guess, it's probably Wednesday of next week. So they take some, maybe some momentum into the convention. So they'd be able to, to dominate the news cycle with whatever news. That exactly. Comes out of that. exactly. I think that's, I think that would be the goal. Um, 
what are you thinking? Do you think it matters? I mean, with this, with this larger conversation about some people saying it doesn't really matter, do, do you think the vice presidential pick matters? Well, you have to be careful, right? David Axelrod, uh, James Carville, uh, somebody like Carl Rove, the vice president, the axiom is can do no harm. It's not clear if the vice president can do any real help. In 1960, the decision was to go with Lyndon Johnson. They needed the state of Texas and they knew he could deliver it. Mm -hmm. uh, Secretary Harris, uh, Representative Bass, uh, uh, Ambassador Rice, they can't really deliver a state. You know, those states, two of them are in California. That state's going to Joe Biden. I think we all know that. So um, this is really a who can do me the least amount of harm, who can help me during the uh, campaign season, who's going to at least handle themselves well in the debate. Now, the thing going against Senator Harris is not the grudge issue where she was hitting the vice president pretty hard during the debates. It has to do with her stance on crime and her stance in terms of her prosecutorial status. Some of the hard left will be against that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they'll get over it. I think right now the, uh, the Democratic Party needs to coalesce around the idea of defeating Trump. Who are the best players that we can put on the field to defeat President Trump? And I think those two represent the best chance, which is why at 56 cents, I think she's cheap. She's a cheap call option. Um, so let's talk about the presidential. Um, the markets have Biden's lead leveling out somewhat. Um, I think it topped out at 63 cents. Um, what does that tell you about the race? Well, listen, I was with President Trump on October 7th, which was a fateful day. That was the day that the Access Hollywood tape got released. That was a very fateful day. On, that was a Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, October 8th and 9th, bad days for the Trump campaign. The 10th and 11th, also bad days for the Trump campaign. Our flash polling, we were down 13% in the flash polling. And so he came back and won what was a, what we thought an insurmountable situation where he was down 13% with 28, 29 days to go. Mm -hmm. So at 40 cents, he is probably underpriced. Okay, I'm talking now as a trader. I'm not talking my book. You guys uh, brought me on to be objective. Mm -hmm. He's probably underpriced at 40 cents because he's a lunatic. He's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve and he'll stop at nothing to try to win the election. Joe Biden is probably fairly priced, though. I think the vice president is going to win this election. And I'm, again, I'm not talking my book. I'm just looking at it analytically. It has to do with sentiment, Allison. The president, for whatever reason, has turned off white suburban women. Go look at the polling numbers. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, he's turned off women over the age of 50. Is a 28% gender gap. I'm not being stereotypical. I'm just being observational based yeah. on data, those demographics are very hard to move. They're very hard to change. Uh, you've got 96 or five or seven days to go before the election. It's not like those people are gonna have a, ah, uh, you know, eureka moment and gonna flip the switch. Three and a half years of Twitter attacks and bullying, bellicosity of rhetoric, mishandling of the corona crisis. There's large segments of the demography that have switched off the president. One last thing people should know on Predict It, if you are the sitting president, you're the incumbent president, and you are experiencing a recession in the year of your candidacy, in the last 100 years, you have not won the election. Americans switch jockeys in an economic crisis. And we can blame this on the president or not blame it on him. We can have that debate, but we're in a very severe health and economic crisis. And I think the Americans are switching jockeys as a result of that, which is why the vice president's strategy is the end of bunker strategy, don't make mistakes. Yeah, well, it's the old adage, obviously, everybody loves to say it's the economy stupid, right? And so that has a it, large impact. Um, Allison, but, it, it, it's more than the economy here yeah. because it is, you're correct. It is, yeah. the, in my opinion, you're correct. It is the economy stupid, but it's also, there's a health care scare going on. I don't understand. I am a lifelong Republican. You know, I'm at odds with the president today. 
I do not understand why the Republicans made the health care issue a politicized issue. Mm. We know from the Asian nations, the European nations, wearing the masks controls the virus, limits the virus, limits the caseload, limits the deaths. Uh, most of Europe is open now. Most of America is still in a defensive position economically. So they made a decision. Again, we can debate it. I'm here to talk about values and predict it, but they made a decision to politicize something that was health related. I don't think the American people like that. Go look at the polling. 67% of the American people dislike the administration's handling of the crisis. Well, and if you're looking at si trying to siphon off some of those voters that maybe are on the fence, which isn't a you know, virtually no percent of the population is on the fence at this juncture. But if there are people who are sort of in the middle, the white suburban yeah. women that maybe he's trying to get back, how do you think that that politicization of this virus? Oh, well, the USA Today uh, uh, said, and you know, obviously the New York Times has said there's about 13 percent of the population that is jump ball. It's usually 20. So to your point, most people are making the decision. You've got jump ball now on 13. And I think that those people are cautious about Vice President Biden because they don't like some of the overregulation. They don't like the radical left. They don't like the defunding of the police. They don't like stuff like that. Flip side is they're upset about the president. They don't think the president has done a good job of handling the crisis, managing his mouth, frankly, managing his Twitter feed. They don't feel that he has been presidential. And so you have this combination of things going on at the same time. You know, the Democrats typically do better with people below the age of 50. That would be Bill Clinton. That would be Barack Obama. That would be Jack Kennedy. Uh, the Republicans do better with people over the age of 60, whether it's Ronald Reagan or Dwight Eisenhower or a Donald Trump. And so you're in an interesting situation here where the Democrat is the older candidate. Mm. Uh, he'll be 78. After a couple of days after the election, uh, the president is 74 now. So, you know, these are, uh, uh, again, I'm not an ageist. I believe people could be 100 and bright and sharp as a tack. But I do think that the Democrats, their demography is tied to a lower age bracket, if you will. And so that's why I think there's still 13% of the people that are in, in uh, play right now. Um, you talk about, you know, coronavirus, I think we hit 150,000 deaths in the United States today or yesterday. Um, what indicators are you looking at within the race? You talk about coronavirus, you talk about numbers. What, what are you making your judgment on? Well, let's stop and just talk about that casualty count. You have 150,000 deaths. You are now 25% of the Civil War. The New York Times said uh, a year ago that we, we always use 600,000 as the casualty tabulation for the Civil War, it could be higher, but still, let's just call it 600,000. You now have 25% of the deaths of the Civil War, three times the Vietnam War, and these are deaths of our family members and loved ones and their civilian deaths in the United States. And we also know, because we're smart people, even the least educated people know that this has been mishandled. I mean, you just, you know, you categorically, I'm not saying that with any level of politicization, I'm just being observant. If the European Economic Union with 500 million people is now down to less than 5,000 cases, and the United States is raging with 75,000 cases and two thirds of the population, boy, we have not handled this well. So my data is three factors. It's the economy, as you said, economy stupid. It's the healthcare scare where women who are in different categories in our society, but there's a lot of moms out there. And so there are a lot of moms who have a mom. Because I just want you to imagine the situation. I've got a five, 10 year old kid. I want to put him in school. My 70, 60, you know, something year old mother is living with me. How do I put the kid in school and have the kid come back and possibly be infected and asymptomatic and harm my mom. Mm -hmm. So you have to stop and think about the bandwidth of what's going on and where the president is failing. And again, if you like the president on the call, don't be mad at me. I'm just being observational and being objective. If I was on his staff 
and, and granted, I only lasted 11 days, but let's say I had a 12th day and I was on a staff, I would look at them and say, hey, you got to solve this problem. This is a big demographic that's worried about school. You're trying to force the schools to be open. That may not be the best idea. The better idea would be to ensure safety and to ensure health and to ensure that people feel that you're competent in terms of handling the crisis as opposed to wishing the crisis was something that it isn't. When he's telling people, we're gonna stop funding the schools if they don't open, he is scaring women in our country. And, and I'm not saying that to be, uh, you know, you know, typecasting or stereotype. I'm not saying it that way. I'm just pointing out you can see it in his poll numbers. So I'm just being observational. Mm, interesting. Um, so we're going to talk about the Electoral College a little bit. Um, are there states where you think traders could pick up some value? Well, okay, so. We've got Iowa, which has been an interesting yeah. state. So Iowa is in play. I know this is a crazy state but you got to put some money on Texas. You have to have some money in Texas because Texas is a lower probability state. But let me tell you something. Okay. He may lose Texas. He's in Texas right now for a reason. He's 19 times into Texas. He's spending ad dollars in Texas. You may know this already. He has pulled out of Michigan. Done. No office in Michigan, very little advertising. So, the price of Michigan should be going up. I haven't seen it on predictive lately, mm. but the price of Michigan should be going up. I think it's, if Will can pull that up, um, we might be able to take a look at the Michigan price. What do you think about- yeah, but I, I, would be, I would be a buyer of Michigan, okay? because he's definitely gonna lose Michigan, and I would be a options buyer of, 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 of Texas. You see, at 77 cents, I'm gonna tell you something crazy. I think Michigan is, is underpriced. I think he's winning. I think he's losing Michigan. Mm. Okay. But I think that he's overpriced at 64 cents in Texas. So when you're, when you're, when you're sitting there and you're looking at this situation, Wisconsin is underpriced. Ask Paul Ryan, Speaker Ryan and I are close. He lives in Wisconsin. There's no chance for the president of Wisconsin. Now, you know, people will say, well, some of these elections are rigged and some of these polls are rigged and blah, blah, blah. Those are democratically controlled states. There's no chance the guy's going to win those states. So, so he's in trouble up there. He's in trouble in North Carolina. So you think Wisconsin's it, underpriced it, at 69? It's underpriced at 69. He's in trouble in North Carolina. Yeah. If we can pull okay. up North Carolina. And, and by the way, don't kid yourself, pulling out of North Carolina, that has not helped the president. At 58 cents, that is underpriced, in my opinion. Uh, last, last thing I'll say about Michigan when he said that Dingle is looking up from hell, uh, they don't forget that up in Michigan. You know, I remember I have family members up in uh, Michigan that live in the suburbs of Detroit. They live in Ferndale. Yeah. Uh, they're blue collar people. They, they despise the president. Oh, I think you're muted for some reason. Are you, did you accidentally hit mute? I lost you for a second. Okay, hold on. There you go. I'm, I apologize. Am I okay now? You're great. So you, I'm Italian, so I talk with my hands. I press something on the computer. I'm sorry. No, no worries. I was just saying about Michigan. I have family yeah. members up there. They despise him. He won it very narrowly last time. Even Michael Moore is starting to change his tune about Michigan. Yeah, well, you know, Midwestern people are very, very loyal. I went to school in Ohio, so I'm well aware of how how well, loyal it is um, it's about dingle really hurt him up there yeah really um, hurt just so your wife knows we got a uh shout out on your white on the wallpaper so <laughs> my <laughs> wife got a shout out on the wall. yeah the wallpaper. Well, look, i mean the problem is this is a makeshift situation i got a room raider on twitter really hurt my feelings everybody knows i have a very thin skin i was one over a scaramucci which is an 11 right because a Scaramucci now is an 11 day period. So Room Raider said this wallpaper and me was one over 11. So I didn't even get one out of 10, Allison. I got one out of 11 <laughs> Room Raider. I've, I like already talked to my, I've already talked to my therapist about it though. I think I'm gonna be okay. <laughs> I, think, I think I should be okay. You can hire someone to, to stylize your background. 
Um, so we're going to do a quick roundup of these down ballot races. Um, how are you looking at them this year? Do you care? Do you think that they sort of are a indicator of, of, you know, the top of the ticket? Or do you think that it's a little bit more split than in, last, you know, previous years? Well, I do care. I mean, listen, yeah. uh, I've been a lifelong Republican. I think the Republicans have really hurt themselves by not addressing Donald Trump. I think their capitulation and their equivocation of Donald Trump, uh, they thought that was a marker that was going to help them. I don't think any of them saw the COVID-19 crisis coming in for 2020. And so, listen, we had a full economy. We had an economy growing at 3. Uh, 2.5 percent, 3.4 percent unemployment numbers was basically full employment. There was no reason for the pre the president should be right now 71, 75. That should be his bid ask spread. He's he's mm -hmm. trading at 40 because your traders are very very smart and they're looking through the electoral college and they're saying, man, he has really stepped on it in so many different states. And many of these states, frankly, are irreparable. You have to just think about he's got 90 days left or 95 days. He's in Texas today. He should be winning Texas. He should be up in Michigan. He's not in Michigan because he can't win Michigan. So, so the point I'm making is the down electoral ballot, you know, the Mitch McConnells of the world, if you will, yeah. uh, they're threatened by this. But somebody like a Mitch McConnell, he's not losing. Yeah. So, you know, people will say he's going to lose. It's tough on him in the polls. Lindsey Graham, Lindsey Graham's not losing. Yeah. Because what will happen is they close the curtain, they go to vote, and they say Graham's been there for multiple decades. He's a powerful guy, mm -hmm. and we need his voice for the state of South Carolina. So I don't know where he is on predicted, but I'd be a buyer of people like Lindsey Graham right. and Mitch McConnell. They're not losing. So people can pretend that they're losing, but they're not losing. If Joe Biden was a sensation like Barack Obama of 2008 and he was coming in with a blue tsunami, mm -hmm. then I would say, okay, those guys are really at risk. Let's go take a look at the data and we'll take a look at it. But I don't see them losing. And so 79 cents is an example, 83 cents. Those guys are not losing. Um, let's take a look at Montana. Will, if you can pull that up. Um, Steve Bullock is running ahead of Steve Daines in our markets. Um, when I checked it earlier, it was 56.45. Yeah. Still is. Who are you buying in this? So I'm buying Bullock because Bullock has the support of a lot of hardcore establishment Republicans. And the Lincoln Project, which you know I'm raising money for, has done a lot of successful ads on behalf of Bullock. Mm -hmm. So I think Bullock is going to win. I, mean, I think he's underpriced at that valuation. So we had a trader actually ask earlier if you would consider taking the Lincoln Project and doing a third party in the future. Would I do a third party? Yeah, with, the, you, with the Lincoln well, Project. Well, I think the Lincoln Project is thinking about that. I, I don't want to speak for the Lincoln Project founders, yeah. but they have all disavowed the Republican Party. For whatever reason, this may be due to my... Uh, loyalty complexes in life. I haven't totally disavowed the Republican Party. I think the Republican Party is infected with Trumpism now. They've been hijacked by a demagogue and a result of which they are now suffering the consequences of adhering themselves to somebody that took them away from their principles. And so this is the greatest schism in the Republican Party since Jerry Ford and Ronald Reagan in 1976. And so it has to be healed. And so I'm a very big believer in the two-party system. I don't think a third party can really be successful in the United States. There's so many different reasons for it. Yeah. But the main one is they tightened the duopoly after the Ross Perot scare 28 years ago in 1992. So, so you're going to have a Republican and a Democrat running for president, and the other people running for president are not going to win the presidency. That's just my honest prediction. So <laughs> Republicans have to get their act together on November 4th. If Trump wins, my opinion, uh, the Republicans will be a minority party for a generation because the very bright people of the Republican Party are moving in a way that's off the mark of the zeitgeist of the country. We are not a white nationalist country. If you look at Tom Cotton's rhetoric, 
Marco Rubio, very stunning rhetoric from him. Governor Haley, stunning rhetoric from her. They, they have been told by political consultants that they need to cleave to some aspect of President Trump's support base. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think that what people really want is aspirational opportunity in their lives, and they're less concerned about some of the nonsense that per the president's professing. And so I think we need to heal that schism uh, and create a unity in that party and expand the demographic tent of that party. If we don't do that, that party's going to get wiped out. And, mm -hmm. and here's the interesting thing about Joe Biden. He's 78 years old. So the question is, is he running at 81? If he wins the election and predicted his right, yeah. 62, 63, is he going to win the election? I predict he will win that election. But is he, if he wins the election, is he running again? I don't know if you guys have a question like that on predicted, but my guess is, is that he will run again at 81. Oh, and people say, oh, he's not going to run again. But trust me, when you get the power, people love power, Allison. They love power. Very, very hard to give it up. The president actually hates the job, but he doesn't want to give up the power. He well, doesn't want the ego blow of the loss either. So he's going to probably stick it out till the end. Well, I spent a decade in D.C., so I'm, I'm well aware of the, the draw to power. Um, as we're talking about the Republican Party, Iowa again. Um, well, that's a lot of time relative to me, Allison. I have to tell you that. <laughs> a lot of time. A couple, couple, like a thousand plus days on you. Um, so, um, so this neck is, this race that, is neck and neck. 3,560 days more than me, but that's fine. That was fast math. Oh yeah, makes sense. Um, <laughs> anyway, so Iowa race neck and neck. Um, also, if you guys hear a little bit of grumbling in the background, my dog is snoring. So apologies for that. Okay, but, good. Um, this one's, this race is neck and neck. Um, where are you buying in this race? So listen, I mean, I don't like her, but, but you're, you know, she's going to win. So, I mean, she's, you know, I think it's fairly priced because I think there's a lot of uncertainty there. Yeah. I think Iowans are a tough breed. You know, they have a level of self-importance that's well-founded, frankly, because they are the first in the nation mover. And so they really take a lot of pride in making these decisions and being artful and careful with them. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it's fairly priced. She could lose. If you put a gun to my head and said, is she winning? I would say, yes, she's going to end up winning. Great. So Greenfield or Ernst? Do you think Ernst will squeak it out? Yes, I think Ernst will squeak it out. Okay. Yes, I think the Republican will win. But I don't think she deserves to win. I didn't say that. Hmm. But I think she will win. What do you think is too high a price for her? Well, you know, she's at 50, so that's high. You know, I mean, she should be trading 44, 46. I don't think she should be trading at 50. But if you put a gun to my head, who's going to win? She's win. Okay. I Next just think it's high. Oh, ahead, sorry. Next up, we've got the um, Senate primary coming up in Kansas. Um, Chris Kobach, 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 I always forget, um, is running against Roger Marshall's. Uh, traders have Kobach losing, essentially, yeah. um, but it, the price has jumped a little bit. What do you think? Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's baked there. He's not going to win. Okay. Yeah, he's not going to win. And, and, and he's just, unfortunately, he's off the zeitgeist if you listen to him and you look at his platform. So... I think the traders have him fairly priced. I mean, he's not going to win. Remember, why is he, if he's not going to win, why is he priced at zero? Because we know so many things can happen. Yeah. I'm going to give you a bit of trivia. Do you know who Jack Ryan was? Not the Tom Clancy uh, protagonist. Who was Jack Ryan? I'm, no, I don't know. I'm going to have, I'm going to. Okay, so he was running against a gentleman by the name of Barack Obama as the Republican nominee for the Senate. Oh. Senate, yeah. and, and what happened was he got into entanglement, a sordid situation in his personal life, and he had to drop out. Mm. But he was neck and neck with a gentleman by the name of Barack Obama, and he dropped out. And so the reason why you have a 36 in a situation like that is you actually don't know what's going to happen until the end. Yeah. We're, we're human beings, you know. Let me ask you this, and you probably don't have this, and hopefully, you know, because it's a health issue, but you have a 77, about to be 78, and a 74-year-old running for president. Are they going to be the actual nominees on November 3rd? Well, we do have, will they drop out? 
and, I, and I'm not trying to be morbid about no. this. Okay, well, there you go. But I'm not trying to be morbid about this. But I think those are priced fairly. But I think your traders are correct in assessing that there's not a zero probability that they're, they're not going to be in a situation like that. I mean, those people at 11 cents, if they hit it, it's a home run. Yeah. You know, God forbid. I don't, I'm not trying to be morbid. I'm just pointing out that there's so many exigencies that happen in life and there's so many things that are unpredictable. What I would say to everybody here on Predicted, I just want you to think about the question in 2015, where are you going to be in five years in a hot summer, late July? It's 2015. Where are you going to be in 2020, late July? Are you going to be home in your house with a mask on? Uh, talking to people over Zoom, or are you going to be out at a bar somewhere? You would have bet the bar, and we're sitting here at home together. So the point being is you don't know what's going to happen. There's all types of vagaries and uncertainties, well, which, made predicted, which makes predicted so much fun. Well, the randomness of the universe is pretty... Is Amen. Showing its, showing its true colors this year, for sure. Um, with the Kansas race, I just want to touch that on that one real quick. If um, Marshall takes that, do you think that Republicans are priced well to win the, the seat, or do you think they're overpriced or underpriced? The seat, you mean, or to stay in the majority? What do you mean? I think the Republicans are going to are are uh, are to take the to take the U.S. Um, yeah. seat or the Senate seat rather in Kansas. The Senate, yes, I think I think they take it. I think I think it's fairly priced. Do you think they still take it if Chris Kobach? you know, somehow ekes it out on the, on August 4th. I don't. Then we have to have another conversation. He's too far off the mainstream. I think you both, I think we both know that. Yeah. So that's my opinion. So we're going to pivot real quick um, to another market with, will the Senate confirm a new Fed chair this year? What do you think? Okay, so I have that at a very low, I don't know where you guys have priced that, but I have that at a very low pro probability. So if it's over three cents, uh, somebody's overpaying for it. Yeah, so it's a yeah. five cents. You should be shorting that because, because uh, it's not inside information, but you know, President Trump te tells people, very senior, who I still talk to inside the administration, that Jerome Powell is quote unquote, the most improved player in the administration. Mm, great okay, information. So, so it should not be trading at five. It should be way less than that. Um, one more question that we've got from a couple different traders. Do you think Trump would swap out Mike Pence? Okay, so that is an interesting thing. And so, of course, the answer is yes, because he doesn't have a lot of loyalty to anybody but himself. I think it'd be very hard for him to do. So I'm going to say he's not going to do it, but it shouldn't be priced at zero. Could it be priced you know, yeah, that's the right pricing. It's a, it's a 10 to 15% probability. You know, the October surprise could be a Nikki Haley in a situation like that. But I think the vice president, uh, I think what the president would be worried about is the vice president, again, if you like him or dislike him, just being observational, he's handled President Trump's personality masterfully. He stayed in the background. He hasn't done anything to affront the president or his family. And I think the notion of someone gouts coming in or a higher profile or higher personality, even if, could, even if it could give him a small pop, is not something the president would like very much. Remember, there are no co-stars in the Trump orbit. Nobody can share the stage with him. And so the vice president's done a very good job of that. The other people that they're talking about, I think they have bigger personalities than the vice president. So I don't think that happens. Yeah, perhaps bigger aspirations in four years. And bigger aspirate, big, bigger long-term aspirations. That's correct. Um, are there any other markets that we aren't talking about that you think we should be we should be checking out? Well, I mean, listen, I'm I I think I don't know if you have these markets. Sure. But, you know, I had I didn't get a chance to look at the site like I usually do. Unfortunately, yeah. I was getting shot with a Nerf gun five minutes ago. <laughs> or typical of what's happening when you're at home. But but. But here's what I would say to you. Um, you know, I think that markets related to the economy are quite interesting because I still believe we're going to have a V-shaped economy. It, it mm. is, it, there's is so much pent up demand and there's so much stimulus that the minute we can take our masks off and go back to work and start talking to each other, you're gonna see an explosion in economic growth. And so 
I don't know if you guys are quote unquote predicting it, but I think you've got to be. We do have a GBP. Yeah, this is, there you go. And that's price right. Yeah. That's price right. Well, great. Um, we don't want to take Thank up any you. more time. Thank you so much for having yeah. me on. And, I know you're uh, going to get back to getting shot by a Nerf gun. And I appreciate it. No, I've got to go to Carvel now. For all of you in the Northeast, I'm heading over to Carvel. Uh, I haven't put on a pair of trousers in five months, so I don't know what's going to happen when I do that. I'll probably have to call Enzo the tailor, but it'll be fine. And uh, I appreciate you guys bringing me on tonight. It's great to talk to you. It's, a, it's an awesome site, and it's uh, valuable for all of us. So thank you for having me, and I uh, uh, wish you guys the best of success. Please stay safe and healthy. Yeah, thank you so much. We're so grateful. I know so many people have enjoyed it. So take care. Enjoy your evening. All right, you too, guys. All Bye. the best. Thanks, Allison.